Welcome to making the Stuart model steam plant part 14. Marking the size of the baseboard ready for cutting and starting to build the water economizer. More about that shortly. I bought this piece of board from our local B&Q, which is like a big supermarket that sells things for DIY. I didn't want to use MDF or chipboard or anything horrible, so I bought a proper piece of wood. You may be thinking why I have an S50 running in the foreground. Well, I like it. In this clip, I'm measuring and marking the position where I'm going to cut the board. The board is going to be 17.5 inches wide, including the edging, and 16.5 inches deep, and that also includes the edging. I need to order some metal from Blackgate's engineering, and the first piece of metal needs to be the base of the boiler. This will hold the gas burner and allow me to bolt the boiler to the steel plate. And as always, before putting the order into Blackgate's engineering, I'm measuring twice, just so I don't get the order wrong. And as the old saying goes, measure twice and cut once. I need to order two 3mm thick brass plates for the top and bottom for this piece of tube that will become the condenser oil trap economizer. What I'm currently doing is making sure that the tube has been cut square, which it hasn't because I cut it on the bandsaw. My old metal cutting bandsaw cuts metal very well, and I've had it for many years, but it never really did cut metal square. And despite supporting the blade, copper tubing doesn't cut square at all. What I'm currently doing is using a set square all the way around the top. And to connect any errors, I mark the part with a felt tip pen and use my belt sander to clean it up until it's fully square all the way around. Then I repeat the process on the other end. After which, I use some sandpaper to remove the sharp edge, but this tool is much better. It's called a deburring tool, and I bought this one from Blackgate's Engineering about 38 years ago, I think. Time really flies when you're having fun. In this clip, you can see how the deburring tool works. It's great for this job, and it's very good for deburring drilled holes. I'm finishing off the inside with some emery cloth. Now this tube is square at both ends, it sits perfectly vertically on the bench, and it's more or less in scale with the 504 boiler. Talking about 504 boilers, in a previous video I showed the loose assembly of another 504 boiler and I put the safety valve at the wrong end. The steam tap needs to fit here, next to the back part of the boiler, and the safety valve needs to fit in the other end. Normally you can't get them wrong because the threads are different, but on this particular boiler, both of the boiler bushes on top of the boiler were threaded 5 sixteenths by 26 threads per inch. Underneath the front of a 504 boiler, the part that supports the chimney, is a shaped casting like this. This needs drilling and threading to take a union to allow the exhaust steam from the steam engine to go up the chimney. On my condenser oil trap water economizer, I need to know where to drill a hole for a steam outlet that will be attached to the boiler. Here I'm marking the position of where the boiler fitting will be. The lower of the two marks is where I'm going to drill the first hole for the exhaust outlet to the boiler. And then using a PM Research cast elbow and some suitable threaded piping, that's how I will direct the jet of steam up the chimney. Inside the condenser, the steam outlet pipe will need an extension so that the pipe goes right to the top. More about that in a future video. I'd just like to break off working on the condenser. These are miniature, doll's house sized terracotta floor tiles, and these are what I'm going to cover the board in. This is at the request of the customer, not my idea, normally I would use wood, generally mahogany strip to represent floorboarding. I've ordered quite a lot of epoxy resin adhesive to stick the tiles down to the board. This piece of wood is wrapped in polythene sheet, and I drew the line on the polythene sheet so I can change it if I want. But at the moment it's great to leave the line on the polythene where it is, so I can check the positions of all the parts on top of the board. I don't normally write things on the parts that I'm making, but it's quite useful for the video. Here I'm showing you the position that the condenser is going to be in. You can see the measurements for the metal parts that I need on the piece of card that form the base template. On this piece of copper tubing, purely by look, there is a line marked all the way down it. I'm about to drill some holes for various pipe fittings. And by using this scribed line as a reference, all of the fittings will be in line when they're finished. The two marks near the bottom of the copper tube are the water inlet and outlets for the economizer coil. 
More about this in the next episode. The water pump is going to be mounted at the right-hand side of the board, and the water inlet from that will be connected to the water tank. Purely by chance, the two marks on the copper tube coincide perfectly with the measurements of both of the connectors on the pump. But of course, only the pump's water outlet is going to be connected to the tank. The bottom one, the water out of the economizer coil, will go to the check valve on the boiler, and by positioning these unions as such, the water piping will be able to go underneath the boiler, quite close to the gas burner, so the pipes will get even hotter. I think I'd better mention that a water economizer is a way of preheating the water before it's pumped into the boiler. Every little helps, so when you're pumping cold water from the tank, as the water travels down the piping next to the gas burner, followed by travelling around a coil inside the exhaust condenser, the water should be a little bit hotter than it started. Which means that when you pump the water into the boiler, it will not lower the steam pressure much. Here I'm drilling three holes which are tapping size for 5 16 by 32 threads per inch. I'm holding this with my hand, but it's not dangerous because the part is actually sat in between the vice jaws, which prevent it from moving if the drill grabs. However, I can never recommend holding things in your hand on a drilling machine. Once all three holes were drilled, without any accidents, I took the part back to the bench. And as I was doing that, I picked up a 5 16 by 32 threads per inch tap and my tap wrench. And here, slowly and precisely, ensuring that the tap is perfectly square to the work, I'm threading the holes in the side of the tank. This tap is quite old, very good quality and still sharp after all these years. I'm not using any lubricant and it's cutting a perfect thread in all three of the holes. The next job is to use a file to deburr the holes. The burrs on the inside of the tank are not important, but these need to be cleaned up. To aid alignment of all the holes, I actually threaded the top hole the same as the bottom two, but this needs to be bigger. It needs to be threaded to suit quarter inch pipe. And that thread will be 3 8 by 32 threads per inch. Here's the union I'm going to use, and as you can see, the hole isn't big enough. I took the tube back over to the drilling machine, drilled the hole tapping size for 3 8 by 32 threads per inch, and here I'm threading it. Enlarging and threading this hole didn't make much of a burr, so I just used some emery cloth, and here I'm screwing the union in place. As you can clearly see from this image, all three of the unions are perfectly in line, which sometimes is not always the case. That's it for this episode. I'd just like to say stay healthy, thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Mainsteam Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists, you can actually watch the videos back to back.